thermodynamic cycles of uh, heat recovery programs. Uh, this is the fourth day I hope, yes, yes. So you uh, finished the basics of uh, thermodynamics, especially with the light of uh, exergy analysis to solve the uh, systems like thermal energy, etc. So that, that using that basics, how to uh, use that basics in the applied uh, thermal engineering, especially applied thermodynamics. So XRG analysis is one of the a powerful tool, uh, I can say. Uh, we can uh, solve so some useful things. It is not possible by uh, uh, some basic level of uh, thermodynamics that's a uh, that's level. So today's my uh, responsibility is to keep a light on thermal cycles, especially working on heat recovery power plants. It's, it's maybe the overview of my uh, earlier publications as well as the books. Uh, this presentation is uh, fully focused on thermodynamic cycles, especially the suitable to heat recovery, the waste heat recovery. A few cycles I'm going to explain here, the, the five cycles, the SOARC, OFC, AC, SRC, and SFC. Out of these uh, five cycles, the few are the basic cycles like ranking cycle and uh, few are uh, currently available in the upcoming technology and some of the uh, plan cycles are the futuristic uh, uh, thermal cycles. So it is covering the past, present, and future. Uh, that means the latest technology like flash cycle also is included here. And at the end of this section, uh, you may be familiar with these thermal uh, cycles and uh, be equipped with uh, some sort of knowledge like uh, the modeling and uh, the power plant simulation and optimization of uh, certain parameters and power feeding also, the, some process conditions, how to make the uh, process conditions and how to evaluate the process conditions without repeating the earlier research work or earlier uh, mathematical methods and etc. Uh, that that uh, uh, components also I included in my presentation. Going to this uh, thermal cycles, I want to uh, show the current scenario of this uh, power generation, especially of the national level. Uh, today, that's Indian. Uh, uh, India's national uh, that's, uh, installed capacity is 38.3 kilowatts. The May is 2021. We are the largest uh, uh, consumer, third largest uh, producer as well as the consumer uh, for the electricity. The gross electricity consumption in 2019 is uh, uh, 1,298 kilowatt hour per capita, but still it is low compared to. Uh, uh, than average, uh, global average, I'd say. So that's why in future, uh, but since the cost of living is uh, rapidly is increasing, we can predict uh, the more consumption of this electricity. But currently, the power plants are well established. Uh, it's, uh, every state is equipped with uh, the power plants, uh, hydro, thermal, etc. But uh, my presentation is focused, uh, even though there's uh, enough power plants are available, enough power generation is there, maybe some places surplus is also is there. Uh, if we are able to generate the power, the heat recovery, that is a, a better option, a more profitable option, I can say. For example, if, uh, there is a uh, one item is coming with the free of cost. Immediately, you won't uh, think the buying of that item. Because that cost, that item is already, uh, you are getting maybe form of uh, uh, government or maybe gift, whatever it may be. If it is coming freely, why we have to buy that item? So similarly, uh, if you are able to produce the electricity without any supply of energy, that means maybe renewable energy or non-renewable energy, then that may be the better option. Definitely, that may be the better option, uh, especially the profit point of view or the That's why my presentation has uh, the weightage compared to the, uh, the existing system. It means uh, how to generate the electricity with small uh, maintenance cost. 
maybe unit cost may be uh, less than the current unit cost of the, as per the car itself, so the car expense. And also uh, the role of uh, renewable energy, that's uh, every year it is average in India, 2% it is increasing as per my past observation I'm saying. It is expected that uh, non fossil fuels, that's renewable energy contribution is likely to be around 44.7%, almost 50% we are expecting uh, at the end of uh, 29 and 30. So, Every year, the role of uh, this uh, renewable and the solar energy, wind energy, the biomass, etc., that role is increasing. And uh, obviously, the conventional power plants, even though they are rich, the government, both state governments and uh, the central government, they are not encouraging this fossil uh, uh, fuel base that's uh, thermal power plants uh, to generate the electricity because of you know uh, the carbon dioxide and environmental effects. Uh, based on the future uh, growth, uh, we have to stop. That's why many thermal power plants we can see they are declaring the retirement. So alternative option is the renewable energy, but renewable energy is fine, but some renewable energies are costly. So in addition to this renewable energy, the waste heat recovery is also one of the options. And uh, in this uh, generation, power generation, uh, since this power generation is mostly suitable for the decentralized uh, level, there is no transmission and distribution losses. But in the current grid-based power generation, there are a lot of transmission and distribution losses. They are uh, uh, evaluated in 2017, 21.04%. More than 20% uh, LCD losses are due to these transmission and distribution losses. But this option, that's uh, both renewable energy for the decentralized power sector and uh, self-generation of these industries, uh, what we can also call as uh, co-generation, case of uh, textiles or uh, sugar plants, cement factories, etc. And uh, this, this, this decentralized power sector uh, definitely uh, it's minimized these transmission losses. The installed uh, capital power generation capacity is uh, it's measured above 1 megawatts capacity associated with industry zone plants is uh, 78,000 megawatts. Okay. Here, the, uh, we excluded less than 1 megawatt capacity. But in fact, uh, to see the standby uh, power generation, the majority of the cases like institutes, even at the domestic level also, the few kilowatts like uh, starting from 5 kilowatts capacity, 50 kilowatts capacity, 100 kVA, many such uh, uh, standby or diesel power sets are available. Excluding that itself is 78,000 megawatts is there. So in future, there is a more chance to uh, recover the heat and especially for the industrial waste heat, I am saying, there is a more uh, possibility of generation of LCD, especially in the gigawatts level, I am saying, the gigawatts level is possible. That's why there is a more potential to tap this. And also economically, it is more encouraging and it's, uh, you can see the power generation comes through this waste heat recovery. Usually comes to 0.5 to 0.7 rupees per unit. Very cheap compared to the, the current uh, tariff of 6 to 8 rupees uh, per unit. Uh, state to state, it will change. Right? Especially in Punjab, it is far too costly. Some states like Tamil Nadu, uh, comparatively, I'm saying that's uh, cheap. So average, it is uh, five rupees or six rupees. I can say in India, that is uh, costly. Uh, actually speaking, that is costly. Uh, so the the cost of this power generation can be drastically and reduce with uh, like some renewable energy like solar PV systems. That's uh, manufacturing cost now is decreased, and still we can decrease that cost by using this space heat recovery now. Uh, more chance of business uh, in this sector. And uh, uh, what about the renewable energy and this waste to power? Waste to power, I'm saying, is uh, whether I can say the waste heat recovery is also is a renewable energy or not. First, let us see the uh, size of this uh, power plants, that's especially for renewable energy as well as uh, capital power plants. And uh, our focus is waste to power. 
uh, so they they can be uh, designed both at the off grid level as well as this grid connected work this very small capacity you can say off grid capital power the size is too big it's a megawatts and there is a surplus of uh, lcd also they are able to generate then that it may be extra lcd can be supplied to the grid so you can see list out here the renewable energies like the bagasu solar pv now of the renewable energy lcd you can see the pv plants the biomass both is a uh, incineration that's a uh, fuel firing modes are available in india as well as this gasification uh, biomass gas generators and wind mills uh zero generators and uh, similarly at the grid connected wind power plants solar power plants most of the solar power plants are pv systems only which are solar thermal also so we think so apart from this renewable energy waste to power is also listed here both in off grid as well as the grid connect then immediately one question will come waste heat recovery is a renewable energy or not is it conventional energy or renewable energy because actually speaking the waste heat is after burning the fuel maybe coal or whatever it may be salt fuel after using still some heat will be there to see the ic engines uh, diesel engine at the exhaust gas it has enough uh, heat and temperature to recover at the low temperature so if we naturally we will get out well under what Uh, heading we have to plan this waste return is it renewable energy or not my answer is yes yes waste return is a renewable even though it is uh, not using any renewable energy technology like solar energy collectors biomass gas fire no wind wind nothing uh, there is no such uh, uh, renewable energy technologies but still uh, we can plan the waste heat recovery as a renewable what is the reason why we can claim this one even in economics you see uh, some subjects uh, equivalents because that great credit transfer you know if some students is doing some new car and he gets purchase some credits can be transferred that means maybe uh, equivalent subjects so here also i can say this is equivalent to renewable energy. waste heat recovery is equivalent to renewable energy, even though it is not using any such technology what is the reason because this electricity generation directly it is not generating any emissions like carbon dioxide that's why that power plants are eligible for carbon credits some nations uh, even india also uh, the governments are out for encouraging such uh, practices in renewable energy use of this renewable energy and also the waste heat return so once the electricity is generated if you are assuming 100% electricity is by renewable energy as well as this waste heat return there is no uh, problem and uh, there is no emissions and especially carbon dioxide emissions drastically it decreases that's why the government is encouraging and they are giving some money for example if uh, i am generating let us say so uh, the 10 megawatts of electricity so that that can be converted into units let's say megawatt uh, hour or kilowatt hours we need actually units and based on that units and uh, tar uh, we can claim some money the some dollars or some rupees so that benefit we can get uh, through this waste uh, recovery that is a that's why the waste heat recovery we can claim as a, a renewable so what is captive power plant uh, this presentation is uh, the mainly focused on the captive power plant the basically what is the meaning of this captive power plant is it's a self generation it's a power plant is a self generation uh, especially it is designed for an industry having the waste heat recovery. a captive power plant which also called as embedded generation is an electricity generation facility used and managed by an industrial or commercial energy user for their own energy consumption that means this is the self generation is independent so the sustainability is possible without depending on the grid they can generate their own electricity then what are the waste heat 
may be sufficient exactly according to their load or it may be insufficient or it may be surplus all these three cases can be uh, designed according to the case study if it is uh, in the waste it recovery is insufficient to meet the uh, industrial load then what they can do they can add some additional standby plants or maybe other solar plants are etc with the generating surplus that can be supplied to the grid even state governments also now they are uh, the schemes you know with, uh, a, at the domestic level we are erecting the solar pv plants at our terrace uh, without uh, incorporating battery or storage directly we can supply to the grid or state government and they will that means the whatever we are consuming they will, they will keep some meter so we can we are supplying to the government and uh, we are also earning money if you are able to generate more amount of electricity than our home load and captive power plants can operate off grid or they can be con connected to the electric grid that's uh, to exchange the uh, excess uh, amount of electricity now this captive power plants uh, are two categories uh, captive power generation and thermal process actually this captive power plant is mostly it is associated with the process that's why it is industrial process industrial captive power power generation there are two uh, categories one is the the topping system second is the bottom system topping system the high temperature gas first it is used for the power generation topping system the high temperature hot gas is first it is used for the power generation after completion of this power generation the rest of the hot gas is used for process for example to take uh, a diesel power plant uh, the temperature after burning the fuel the first it goes to the power generation at the exhaust only the process heat we can plan at the exhaust only at means at the 200 degrees centigrade temperature approximately we can plan the process heat but what about the bottling system the high temperature gas is it is uh, used for the process heat not for the power generation after completion of this process heat, the rest of the waste heat that is used for the power generation thermodynamic point of view the the topping system has higher efficiency you know as per the carnot theorem uh, the source temperature is high means we can expect more thermal efficiency uh, bottoming system we can't expect that much higher efficiency but what about the environmental point of view especially our carbon credits here the first option uh, that is the topping system they are not eligible for carbon credits climb the carbon credits they can't claim any benefits of this power generation whereas the second option instead of letting this uh, hot gas into the atmosphere they are generating wealth waste to wealth second is the waste to wealth let me take the example of industry uh, what according to our case studies there is a cement factories in india we have so many cement factories most of the cement factories they are focused on the cement production of them they are using lot of furnaces but they won't mind they are simply they are letting this hot gas to the atmosphere but a few of the industries now they extended to the this type of post generation so that gas that the waste gas hot gas i am saying that they are using for the electricity generation so that electricity generation is coming from the waste that's why the second option the bottoming system option uh, bottoming cycles can climb the carbon credits so that's why my presentation is fully focused on the bottoming system only i'm not going to explain any topping systems here for example there is a breton cycle in you know, a gas power plant uh, after the gas power plant the exit of this gas turbine there is a temperature of exhaust gas is you know high it is a 500 degrees centigrade high 600 even 700 degrees centigrade also according to the process conditions so that can be used for uh, the process heat or maybe still 
power generation in case of the combined cycling power plant and they can use for cooling or desalination. There are many such options are there for the process use. But that options I am not going to explain today because that objectives are completely different. But today my objective is to explain to focus on the photomic system because of this uh, attractive benefit that is a carbon credit. So this is a one of the option, uh, especially to get the flexibility in the power plant. The flexibility means it may be technology, uh, flexibility in the technology. I'm going to explain the flexibility in the technology. That means how to select a suitable technology. And also flexibility in the integration. Flexibility in the arrangement of energy source. Flexibility in the arrangement of energy source. So here I am showing the flexibility in the arrangement of energy source. Uh, let me take the uh, two examples of this renewable energy sources. One is the solar thermal energy. Uh, second is the biomass. Solar energy has a lot of benefits at the same time, many challenges. Benefits means it's a uh, renewable energy. It's a uh, uh, sun, sun is, uh, is freely available. No need to pay money for solar energy, except the equipment, I am saying. But the uh, challenges are that is thin. So, uh, maybe I can say at the peak level, 1000 watt per meter square. Maybe some places like Rajasthan, maybe more than 1000 watt per meter square. But compared to the uh, rich sources like uh, coal, oil, natural gas, that is thin now. And what about the uh, availability? Can't expect a uniformity. That's a, it's a more randomness. The sunrise to sun, sunrise to sunset. The more variations. And in the cloudy period, we can't expect the solar rays. And costly equipment is costly. See, these are the many challenges are there. And if you see some another. Uh, renewable energy, uh, maybe wind energy, or maybe here yeah, I am taking the example of biomass. Biomass is the renewable energy. So in this biomass, if you are clubbing the solar energy with the biomass, biomass also has the benefit of uh, climbing renewable energy, but uh, the availability, the scarcity is there, the biomass, some places its scarcity is there. So if you are clubbing these two, uh, what are the challenges we listed here for the solar energy as well as this biomass energy? Both can be subsidized. Both can be subsidized. So that is the advantage of this solar energy and biomass. And uh, I, as yesterday I saw one news. Let me give the example of uh, that uh, that one. Uh, it's well known CMC. They are uh, integrating Covaxin and Covishield. I think you may be aware you are staying in well known third party. We have certain benefits in Covishield, uh, that's a COVID-19 and the co-vaccine. Uh, they got permission also to, to clubbing these two vaccinations. So what benefit they, they can get? The benefits of this co-vaccine and the benefits of this merits of this uh, Covishield, they, they, that means that that's the improved version, I can say. So similarly here also, if you deal solar energy alone or biomass energy alone, there are a lot of issues. Obviously, you know, no need to uh, explain those difficulties. You see the configuration here. Uh, actually, this biomass configuration I collected from the uh, typical case studies. In, uh, in coastal India, I saw a lot of uh, biomass power plants in the range of uh, 10 megawatts capacity. Uh, That's uh, eastern coastal area. Uh, you may see here the biomass firing system in the furnace. Here the biomass is directly fired and uh, the gas is used to generate the steam so that you can run operate the steam power plant. A typical small, uh, just simple uh, rank without much feed water heaters, much uh, repeaters, simple uh, ordinary ranking cycle they are using. That's sufficient because that capacity is uh, and also heat source is low temperature. And this is supported by the solar collectors, that's the concentrating collectors, so that it is also generating the steam. The steam from this biomass and steam from the solar energy is uh, integrated, and there are 
rotating the turbine, steam turbine. So what we are able to adopt these control systems, the sophisticated control systems like uh, automation system. According to the, uh, that means sensor, sensors will take the availability of sun or sun position. According to the availability of the solar radiation, it will control the biomass speed. So you see this, uh, I think this 6 to 6 it is showing here. Actually, you can uh, operate 24 hours also. That means 100% biomass uh, nine time. And we have steam generation from the solar collectors. Steam generation from the solar collector gradually it is increasing, reaching maximum in the uh, room time, and it is uh, there is a drop. I got the compensation. It is because the load is constant. Assume the load is constant. We have to operate this power plant at the rated design load. That is, say it is designed for 10 megawatts. Continuously, we have to operate at 10 megawatts only without any fluctuations. So, steam from the biomass. So, the steam from the biomass is compensated according to the availability of the solar radiation. The maximum in the uh, morning and uh, evening, and the noon time it is minimized. Accordingly, the feed is controlled. Then, what is the total steam generation from uh, solar collector as well as this biomass? It's constant. I can draw a horizontal line here uh, that throughout the day, that's uh, 24 hours, the constant amount of steam can be generated irrespective of availability of the biomass as well as the availability of the solar radiation. That is the advantage. So that's why the accordingly you may also see the biomass speed is controlled here, uh, maybe some electronic uh, control systems. Uh, so the if you in, accordingly if you are uh, continuing this power generation, the constant amount of power can be generated. This type of uh, options. So similarly, this waste recovery also can be integrated uh, such uh, conventional as well as this non-conventional source of energy. Because uh, we are at, uh, actually we are in the transient mode, slowly we are switching from conventional to the non conventional practice of this energy sources for the power generation. Overnight, we can't uh, switch from conventional to the non conventional. That's why there is uh, so slowly we are progressing. That's why this phase, this, uh, this uh, generation, we can plan about this uh, integration of conventional as well as non conventional. And also integration of different uh, renewable energies like uh, solar and biomass. Okay, now the, my title is uh, heat recovery. Okay, waste heat recovery. Okay, that's why I am uh, defining the nature of the meaning and nature of this heat recovery. How heat recovery will be there? Heat recovery is a simply it is a heat exchanger. Where there is two fluids, it's uh, houses two fluids, hot fluid and cold fluid. Generally, for industrial waste, waste heat means the hot gas. Uh, red color I am showing is hot gas. There are four uh, options I am explaining here. Four options are four designs of uh, waste heat recovery. So, hot fluid temperature is gradually decreasing, whereas the working fluid temperature is increasing. Working fluid may be single fluid system or multi fluid system. Single fluid means this ranking cycle, steam ranking cycle. H2 is a single fluid system, the pure substance. An organic ranking cycle system also, ORC also, uh, but ORC is designed for low temperature fluid source and steam is designed for relatively high temperature source. Since it is a single fluid system, the temperature is constant during the phase change, that's a boiling evaporation. And variable temperature you can find in the uh, economizer and so overhead drop. According to our uh, workshop context, that's exergy, there is a more decay, exergy decay with this practice. The area between this hot fluid and working fluid, you can see since it is a horizontal line, it looks like a chair, there's more gap is there. There's more gap means more unavailable energy, more irreversible. So obviously your exergy efficiency for this heat exchanger will decrease because we are not able to tap, we are not able to convert the effect to exergy utilization. We are able to tap more exergy, it's easy to generate more exergy. 
the subsequent process. Whereas in the uh, melting fluid like binary fluid system here, the KC is uh, uh, the binary fluid system actually we can use for uh, cooling purpose. That's a popular cycle is VR cycle, you know, vapor absorption refrigeration cycle. You reverse that vapor absorption refrigeration cycle uh, that is called as Kalina. Since it is Kalina cycle, since it is invented by Kalina, that's a uh, US uh, Texas uh, scientist, uh, that's why it is called as Kalina cycle. Uh, what are the uh, special feature of this uh, binary fluid system compared to the single fluid system is the phase change with the variable temperature, both evaporator and condensation. Working fluid temperatures keep on changing. Evaporators keep on increasing. That's why you can see the close match compared to the single fluid system. There is a close match between the hot fluid and the cold fluid. Close match means what of the net entropy generation it is decreasing. Unavailable portion of this XRG, that's irreversibility, is decreased. That's minimized. We can design with the minimum. XRG destruction with this binding fluid system compared to the single fluid system. It also associating some challenges. Uh, I will uh, explain uh, subsequent uh, configurations and layouts. And see the third option. The heat recovery can be planned with the multi pressure system. This is a single fluid system only. Third C is the single fluid system only, same like A, ORC and SRC. But the difference is in option one, it's a single pressure, single fluid and single pressure. But in option three, it's a single fluid, multi pressure. It may be a dual pressure or it may be triple pressure, four pressure, and so on. What is the benefit by using this? Uh, here I am showing real pressure. Uh, by using this real pressure, low pressure one is a low pressure uh, working fluid and high pressure working. What benefit you can get? We compare the uh, SRC and ORC. Compared to that, is it uh, close? You are getting some closeness. That zigzag shape of this working fluid. There is a. It's moving towards the hot fluid. To some extent, same like binary fluid system, similar to the binary fluid system, the same benefit we can climb to this multi pressure heat recovery steam generator. The heat recovery, if it is generating steam, that heat exchanger is called as heat recovery steam generator. If this heat recovery uh, is used for vapor generation in case of uh, organic ranking cycle, you may call that as a heat recovery vapor generator, HRVC. So uh, this third one is better than the first one, but this is suitable. Uh, the C option is suitable for uh, high capacity focus, high temperature heat source. Economically, I'm saying, but the option one is in case of single fuel system, a small capacity, two megawatts only, and uh, low temperature, a single pressure, single fuel is enough. So that is the difference. That is the uh, analysis part. That is the economic uh, thermodynamic analysis. That that is different. Just I am defining the options of the heat recovery. At the fourth option, this is the latest option. I can say this is the flash. Uh, working fluid is flashed. This is the single fluid system. Uh, in this single fluid system, some part of working fluid is flashed. What benefit of this flashing of this working fluid? Especially at the end of this economizer, some part of liquid, which is a pressurized or hot liquid, is flash means flash means it is expanding expansion from high pressure to low pressure. For example, before expansion, it is 100% liquid. After expansion, may I ask you, is it liquid vapor or liquid vapor mixture? For example, you are expanding a liquid. Let me take the water. We are expanding the water from 10 bar to 1 bar. At 1 bar, what we are expecting? What the phases? Is it still liquid or is it 100% vapor or liquid vapor mixer? May I ask any one of you? Because it also helps me uh, to whether you are uh, able to catch my points or not. 
like a feedback, whatever I'm explaining, are you able to understand that or not? That also I can get like a feedback. Are you getting my question? Once you are expanding the liquid at the exit of the expansion, it's not like turbine expansion. It's like a, you know, a restricted process, same like throttling, it's a flashing. That's why it is called as flashing. The liquid is flashed. What you are expecting at the exit? A it will be a mixture of, it will be a mixture of uh, good, liquid and vapor. Yes, yes, it's a mixture, yeah, exactly. It's a mixture of liquid and vapor. So you are generating vapor, some additional vapor, I'm saying you are generating some additional amount of vapor that can be supplied to the turbine. Immediately you may ask the question, sir, you are saying some additional amount of vapor. We are some working, we are losing some working fluid. How you are compensating? Yes. If I'm comparing here, let us say one kg of working fluid is going here. Here I'm taking one plus X kg of working fluid. Without compromising the main structures, main layout, I want to get, I want to use X amount of working fluid for the flasher. Then I can take one plus X kc. Then there is no issue of damage of this original circuit. You got my point. So you are generating some additional amount of vapor. That vapor, if you are supplying to the turbine, obviously you can generate more amount of uh, electricity. This is a uh, actually steam flash cycle. Uh, SFC is a steam flash cycle. OFC is an organic flash cycle. And Japan uh, uh, technology, we also associated with the Japan touch agents. Uh, they generated this flash cycle, uh, especially with the steam, not for the organic fluid. But we we tried with the organic fluid also. Uh, uh, our uh, box is a first work, I can say, like. That's why uh, OFC, I only named this OFC since uh, our work is the first work. Uh, but our inspiration is this uh, Japan industrial work only. That's a steam flash again. India also some cement factories are using this steam flash technology. So they are generating additional amount of vapor that the steam and so that they can climb the augmented electricity. Similarly, at the lower temperature also, this technology we can adapt. We tried and we got successful results. That name is the OFC system. So this flash technology we can use both in steam flasher as well as the organic flash. So I will explain the technology and how this technology works. Okay, may I go next slide? Uh, that's the technology why. Uh, are you clear about these four versions of this heat recovery? That's a single fluid system and multi fluid system like AC and multi pressure and flash system. The flash system, the dotted line shows the expansion from high pressure to low pressure. And at the end of this uh, expansion, that's flash, there's a separation. I can say left side one more arrow, I can go. That's uh, liquid separation and vapor separation. The right side is showing the vapor separation. That's a small amount of vapor only, actually speaking. Even though that is small, delta X, that gives a, a big difference in the power separation. And also economically, this is benefit. Okay, coming to the uh, technologies, the, um, the I listed in the first uh, present in the first slide, uh, the, I think five technologies I listed. Out of these five, this is the first one. Was I am going to explain uh, organic. The name of organic. Uh, why it is called as organic? Because it's using organic fluid. That's why it's organic fluid. Okay, organic ranking cycle. It contains the carbon compounds. The working fluid contains the carbon compounds. That's why it is called as organic fluid. Okay. What is the benefit of this organic ranking cycle compared to the other working fluids? So molecular weight is a benefit. Actually. It's a higher molecular weight and low boiling point. Higher molecular weight gives the, that means heavy. The working fluid is heavy. It's more dense. We can generate more electricity in the turbine. And heavy means the, and also the balancing of the turbine is also easy. For example, if the uh, working fluid is light, let's take the gas turbine, even steam turbine also. But since the working fluid is light, the 
A gas turbine creates no heavy vibrations compared to steam turbine. Compared to steam turbine, this vapor turbine still it is more balanced. Why it is more balanced? Because of this uh, heavy uh, high molecular weights. And uh, working speed, RPM. Gas turbine RPM is thousands of RPM, 20,000 RPM, and, and steam is immediate, and this is still it is low, low RPM. So by decreasing this uh, speed of the rotor, the balance, one is balancing is easy. And second is the noise. We can't expect uh, the more noise. For example, if you are visiting any gas, gas power plant, they will use some equipment for your ears. You know, we can't go directly to the power section of the gas supply because that much decibels it will generate. It's not advisable to visit directly. Of course, the plant people will take care about you, that safety, the ear protection they will do. With this ear protection only, we have to visit the gas power plant because that much uh, sound it will generate. For organic, there is no such problem. Uh, no need to hear this uh, ear protection. Straight away, we can visit this organic use. That means organic and inside the power plants. In boiling point, I can say this boiling point is the advantage to tap the waste heat at the low temperature. For example, I have a hot water at 100 degrees centigrade. Can I generate the electricity using steam technology? It's difficult. We can't generate the, uh, we can't design. First of all, we can't design the steam power plant with the source of 100 degrees or 150 degrees centigrade. The alternative option is we have to select the Low boiling point uh, working fluid. That's the uh, best option is organic fluid. That's why we tap the heat at the low temperature. We can design the organic ranking cells. This organic fluid undergoes the chemical deterioration at the high temperature. This is a drawback, but this is not the issue. We are not designing this organic ranking cycle at the high temperature. We are designing the organic ranking cycle at the low temperature only, so it's above 100 degrees centigrade only. That's why it's it's not the big issue for organic ranking cycle. Uh, it is limited to uh, low temperature. Uh, one more practical issue is there the availability of the uh, equipment. Most of the equipment we have to import. Steam means it's a VHL, the state, uh, or even many private manufacturers of the steam turbine, all the technologies, heat exchangers, but organic, because the majority of the fluid, uh, ORC equipment, we have to import. Import also no issue, uh, but problem is uh, if some damage or uh, repair is there, uh, again we have to call the mechanic, means from the foreign country. That this COVID 19, the calling and journey that's too risky. So these issues will come if you are losing this uh, uh, importing the equipment from other countries. That's why at the national level, what we have to think, uh, that's uh, our responsibility also. Uh, increasing this, all we have to, uh, the technology, we have to plan uh, and manufacture at our place on. That's a better option. Other uh, points we have to consider while selecting the working field. I'm not elaborating all in uh, like classroom. Actually, this is a subject I'm teaching to my master's students, uh, uh, MTech thermal students. Uh, let me uh, explain one or two important points. Now. One is uh, the first, uh, thermodynamic performance. That's okay. No need to elaborate. Uh, that they have this mechanical engineers prepared about this thermodynamic performance. The positive or isentropic saturation vapor. What is the meaning of this positive or isentropic saturation? Organic ranking cycle, that's organ, organic ranking cycle, ORC, we have to select isentropic saturation or positive saturation. What is the meaning of this uh, saturation? See this uh, house, the right hand side. Uh, this is a TS diagram, temperature and uh, entropy diagram. The first one is for water. It's a dome. You can see the vapor dome. At the inlet of the turbine, if it is a saturated vapor, saturated steam, saturated steam is expanding in a turbine, 
the turbine is completely exposed with the moisture it is not advisable that's why what uh, how we are uh, uh, addressing this difficulty by adding the steam reheater you know there are steam reheater after the evaporator that's mandatory without reheating the steam this issue will come okay but what about the others uh, soaps are uh, if you see the organic fluid the first one is water organic fluid that's a dry fluid see the slope slope of the saturated vapor for vapor sorry for water what is the slope here saturated vapor slope first two negative or zero first two drawing i am asking what is the slope of this curve vapor curve positive negative or zero please respond i am asking simple questions all hello hello please please respond so it's a negative slope it's a negative yeah slope is negative thank you the slope is negative and uh, second drawing slope is positive that's why here this positive we have to select why we have to select this positive that's in at the inlet of the point this is a saturated uh, vapor condition but even after expansion this is remains in dry conditions remains in the dry condition in the vapor turbine that's why if you see the organic ranking cycle the steam uh, the vapor reheater is not mandatory reheating is not mandatory uh, superheating and that is not mandatory even saturated vapor is sufficient for the power generation when isentropic also you see here this is isentropic uh, expansion that's zero slope is zero in the third one even at isentropic expansion also it is uh, uh, almost dry you can see it's slightly to almost dry so we have to select either this positive slope or this is a vertical line vertical line is also called as isentropic since it is vertical entropy is constant for the vertical line that's why it is called as isentropic fluid so wet fluid dry fluid and isentropic the, the fluid we can categorize into according to the slope wet dry and isentropic for this orc we have to select positive or isentropic saturation level the remaining is uh, high density low viscosity for to minimize the friction high conductivity to maximize the heat transfer and uh, the evaporative pressure acceptable evaporative pressure condensation pressure is above atmospheric conditions so that no need to maintain the vacuum the steam it's a vacuum that's a below atmosphere that's why we are used maintaining the vacuum pump but in the war see there is no such uh, need because uh, most of the organic cranking cycle including this binary fluid system the condenser pressure is above atmospheric pressure high temperature stability the chemical it is stable no melting uh, no melting and freezing point and high safety these are all our safety and uh, environmental benefit like uh, low friction low global warming and good availability and low cost availability now it's not issue because the now you see the refrigeration refrigerant uh, are available now refrigeration air conditioning field is completely mature so that so some of the working tools available in the refrigeration industry also we can adapt and mix with the uh, other organic fluids and this. so the availability is not the issue currently low cost that's uh, still we have to find the new fluids uh, low cost fluids by using the mixes but currently the cost of the working fluids as used in wars is uh, more compared to the water of course water is you know that is cheap Okay, and uh, organic ranking cycle, the configuration, it's a it's a ranking cycle. The small difference is that between the ranking cycle, what ranking cycle and organic ranking cycle. Left hand side, you can see the configuration, plant configuration. Basically, ranking cycle consists of turbine, condenser, pump, and boiler. Okay, these four are 
mandatory components. Remaining work means uh, extra components like sofa features, etc., clean works, etc. These are the four basic components. So, the first I am showing this is the boiler. Boiler consists of thermometer, evaporator, and sofa heater. Uh, since our title is waste heat recovery, that's why the, what are the gas, hot gas coming from the process industry that has been tapped in the heat recovery vapor generator to generate the vapor and subsequently with expanding and condensing, condensation in air cooled or water cooled and then it's pumping back to the boiler or heat recovery vapor. Uh, you may see one additional component uh, in relation to this core that is regenerator. In steam ranking cycle, we are not using any regenerator at the exit of turbine. But here, you are see at the exit of this turbine, still the temperature is enough high. Do you know the exit temperature from the steam turbine? It's around 50, 45, 50. Okay. But here, the exit temperature is it's, uh, more than 75 degrees centigrade. It's so more than 75 degrees centigrade average I am saying that fluid to fluid it will change. As per the turbine inlet temperature also it will change. But average generally I am saying it's more than 75 degrees. That's why there is a chance to recover internal heat recover uh, and uh, that supports the condenser as well as this oil. The size of the condenser is decreasing and also because of this preheating the size of the boiler also is uh, decreasing, but it is not affecting the power generation. It's not influencing the output, uh, but it is influencing the efficiency. That's why you, we can see the this type of regenerator in uh, organic ranking cycle. So this is the one of the drawing the case study drawing collected from Andhra Pradesh. It's four megawatts. Which is very this is diagram. You can see the different uh, circuits here. The first one is the source, energy source. It's a, this is the cement factory. Uh, Altratec, yeah. The cement factory name. This is Altratec in uh, Kadipatri, the south, uh, south Andhra Pradesh. <clears throat> then later you can see this is the waste heat recovery section. Where thermal oil is generated, oil temperature is the thermal oil. Even solar thermal also, you can see the oil, thermal oil, the thermal fluid they use in solar concentrate. And later, from the oil, there is a transfer of the heat from the hot fluid to the working. So, this working fluid temperature is increasing here. Uh, the working fluid temperature is increased and expanded in the turbine and followed by uh, the regenerator that's also called as here recuperator and condensation and pumping and it goes to the boiler. Uh, the circuit is here. This is the uh, power circuit that's a pentane uh, circuit that's working in this pentane here and later it is a cooling circuit where uh, the water cooled condenser is used. Okay, this is a how many get to exceed the capacity of this capacity of this URC, this four megawatts. Okay, it's a low temperature and low capacity. That capacity can be designed based on the availability of this waste fluid. Okay, second, the first is a URC, the second technology is a OFC, organic flash cycle. Uh, this organic flash cycle is uh, we extended from the uh, ORC. Organic, the configuration of organic ranking cycle has been uh, updated with the flash. As I told, uh, flash can be used to uh, generate this uh, vapor. In case of steam flasher, to generate the steam. In case of this uh, OFC, to generate the vapor. Uh, we have a flash cycle in geothermal power plant. Uh, that geothermal power plant is completely different uh, with this OFC principle. Geothermal, the liquid from the earth, it is taken, it is flashed, and uh, uh, whatever the vapor it is coming from the flasher, that's uh, directly it goes to the turbine and uh, again back to the well or it may be recycled for the process. That is different. But here in OFC, 
in Rankin, this is the Rankin cycle only, but additionally, we are adding this flasher. See, this working fluid, as usual, it goes to boiler from the pump, economizer, at the exit of economizer, some working fluid is separated. Actually speaking, this small amount of working fluid only separated, it flashed from high pressure to low pressure. And you can see the separation of this fluid, the, the yellow color shows the vapor, and uh, blue color is the uh, liquid. The liquid is recycled and uh, vapor is directly supplied with the vapor turbine at the suitable point. Actually, this is not the high pressure. Is a, I can say this is the intermediate pressure. That's why at the intermediate pressure level, it is supplied to the turbine. So the turbine is receiving the additional amount of working fluid. You can expect uh, uh, more amount of power generated. That's why it is a augmented power. It is augmented power compared to the wash. But the thing is, there is a other side of the coin also. I have to explain here itself. The economizer load is increased compared to the ORC. See, in ORC, if I am taking one kg. Uh, one unit of uh, mass for it, and uh, if X is taken in OFC, here the OFC, the working fluid is 1 plus X. The economizer load is increased. What about the efficiency, thermal efficiency? Thermal efficiency will take care about this heat supply, the more amount of heat supply we are supplying. Of course, there is a uh, improvement in output also. But the observations are going Whatever the power augmented that is not able to justify to improve the efficiency. So, finally, what is happening? There is a drop in efficiency. With this adoption of this flash cycle, uh, organic in case of organic flash cycle, uh, thermal efficiency is decreasing. The both Pasla and uh, whatever the according to the thermodynamics, the efficiency is decreasing. So, once the efficiency is decreasing, we can't adopt this type of technology where efficiency is the main object. For example, there are some other power generation options or configurations are there where the field is directly bond. In case of solar collector, solar collectors are used to generate the as a heat source and to generate the vapor. That the primary objective is to save the fuel, means uh, to maximize the efficiency. Even solar Collectors also to maximize the efficiency. That is the primary objective. But what about the waste heat recovery? Is it, uh, are you uh, planning to minimize the waste heat recovery? Nobody will try to minimize the waste heat recovery because that is a waste. If you are able to tap more waste, you can generate more wealth. That's why here an objective is completely different. Waste heat recovery, objective is not to Maximize the efficiency. So, objective is to maximize the production. Yes, the production is maximized. The LCD production is maximized here. Nobody will mind the efficiency. This with the penalty of efficiency. That's not the issue here. That's why this type of technology is suitable only for this type of waste recovery, not for uh, the fuel fired power plant or solar collector based power plants. So we have to keep in mind this flash technology is suitable for waste recovery. I think you are clear about this uh, justification. Okay, next three. Third is thought technology, the binary fluid system. So binary fluid system can be used for both cooling, option one cooling only, option two. So the right side is option one, and uh, the line sketch is showing the option two, power only. There is one more option, three, power and cooling, simultaneously power and cooling. That is different, that uh, that presentation is different because my diet is focused only on the power generation. Okay. And this binary fluid system, how it is working. Uh, right side, some animation is explaining to you. So basically, this uh, binary system is uh, driven by separation and mixing. There is fluid is separated. Once you are adding the heat, the fluid will separate. Let us say A plus B. A plus B can be separated. That is opposite side. That means heating. If you are cooling the fluid, 
if you are cooling the fluid, it is possible to mix two fluids that A and B can be mixed together. That mixing process is called as absorption process. The vapor is absorbed into the liquid. The process is called as absorption. That's why the cycle is called as vapor absorption cycle. Vapor absorption power cycle, vapor absorption refrigeration cycle. The both I am showing here. Uh, that depends upon the direction. The power cycle direction is uh, expanded in the turbine, and with the vapor uh, absorption refrigeration cycle, it goes to the throttling. After throttling, first it goes to the condenser. After condenser, it goes to the throttling, then followed by evaporator. Only difference is the compressor. Uh, here the compressor is uh, thermal compressor. Whereas in the vapor compression refrigeration system, we are using the mechanical compression. Coming to the power cycle, it is invented by Alexander Kalina. Uh, recently, he expired in 2018. He is in Texas at the age of 25. He has uh, plenty of uh, patents uh, in Kalina technology. So more than 50 patents he has in the Kalina cycle. Uh, one of such simple uh, layout I am explaining here. So basically, the main, uh, the basic working principle of this binding fluid power cycle is. Yeah, uh, let me explain this for this ranking cycle. Then I will show the modifications compared to the ranking cycle. There is a turbine and heat rejection. You may call this as a condenser time gain. Actually, it is absorber. Uh, you may call like condensed steam pump. Then it is a pump and boiler. Okay, turbine, condenser, pump and boiler. These are four are the basic components, same like Rankine cycle. And this is a modified Rankine. How it is modified? Rankine cycle. How it is modified? Rankine cycle is designed for single fluid only, not for binary fluid. So to adapt or to convert the Rankine cycle and uh, for the binary fluid system, how many components are included here? One is the separator. One is the separator. Second is the throttling. Of course, mixing is also, this is the process actually. Mixing actually goes directly to the absorber. I am showing separately. It's uh, directly connected to the absorber inside the heat exchange. So basically, separator and throttling is the extra components, additional components compared to the uh, rank inside. As the animation shows, after heating the working fluid, after pumping in the boiler, the temp, uh, so taking heat uh, in the form of uh, waste heat, that's, uh, the first section is economizer and evaporator. So, superheater is not uh, necessary, it's, uh, it's not mandatory, it's showing according to the requirement. The fluid at the end of this second section, the fluid is a mixture of liquid and vapor, same like flash up. So liquid and vapor has been separated. Uh, vapor alone is directly supplied to the turbine via superheater. What about the liquid? That liquid is uh, weak in concentration. That's why it is called as weak solution. That weak solution is expanded from high pressure to low pressure and it is going to the absorber. It's going to the absorber. Whereas the vapor after expansion it goes to the absorber and it is rejecting heat. And then it's uh, converting into the saturated liquid conditions. Okay, for example, assume there is no separator. Assume this is the ranking cycle. And the vapor has more uh, ammonia that is rich in concentration, it's uh, 90% plus. If this working fluid is directly uh, supplied to the condenser, what happens? It is not possible to condense. Thus, you know, boiling point of ammonia is different and boiling point of water is different. The boiling point of ammonia, pure ammonia, it's minus, it's, uh, minus 32, around 32 degrees centigrade. 32, 35, around. The boiling point at atmospheric conditions. The boiling point of water at atmospheric conditions is 100 degrees centigrade. But at what conditions we have to reject the heat? At our sink condition, if it is maybe 30 degrees or 35 degrees centigrade, we have to maintain the sink temperature. But ammonia is minus temperature, boiling point, and water is it's too high, it's 100 degrees centigrade. If you want to 
uh, reject the heat at atmospheric conditions. So it's 90 percent. It is not. It's not possible to condense because that boiling point, that condensation temperature is too low. We have to maintain very low temperature. It means maybe close to zero degrees centigrade, five degrees or ten degrees. That much low temperature we have to maintain for the complete condensation of this vapor. But if you are adding some water, whatever the boiling A mixer boiling point gradually it will increase. At what temperature you need? Let us say I need a boiling point of 35 degrees centigrade. Accordingly, we can add the mixer, add the water. Uh, I'm saying water. Actually, this is the weak mixer can move, consist of more quantity of water, less quantity of ammonia. That's why once you are adding, mixing this water to the vapor, automatically boiling point will increase the reference with reference to the vapor and uh, this is of course this is a liquid there is no issue of uh, condensation and the boiling point you can control according to the sink temperature that's why you are adding this separator otherwise there is no need there is another option is there without this separator we, it is possible to condense the vapor at this absorber but you have to maintain high pressure to increase the boiling point, once you are increasing the condensation pressure, whatever the boiling temperature, it will increase. But once you are increasing this boiling pressure, whatever this expansion in the turbine, the range, the range will decrease. That will affect the output. That's why without thinking about the rising of the pressure, we are thinking about decreasing of the concentration. The concentration is decreased. And then compared to weak solution, the concentration is increased. But compared to this turbine mixer, the concentration is decreased. This is the solution. This solution is called as strong solution. The remaining is as usual, that is the heat addition and expansion and heat addition. So we are able to generate the electricity with the low temperature heat source, even at 100 degrees centigrade or hot water like geothermal or maybe 150 degrees centigrade, etc. There are different configurations are available uh, to tap the heat at uh, low temperature, intermediate temperature, and higher temperature. Even at uh, 400, 500 degrees centigrade, also we can tap the heat using this binary fluid system. But the slightly the configuration will change. This is the some of the experimental works uh, uh, I'm sharing uh, the, the binary fluid system. Actually, our observations are showing uh, we are designing this binary fluid system only for the power, only for the power. It's not much competitive with the OAS because organic ranking cycle already is available. The technology is already available. Uh, that's that's maybe more efficient, efficient uh, option compared to the Kalina cycle system. Because in Kalina cycle system, the amount of vapor generator is not sufficient. It's not much compared to the organic ranking cycle system. That's why there is no, and also this ammonia is toxic in nature, it's more corrosive. We can't lose any copper and its alloys. These are the issues. But if we are extending this Kalina for cooling also, I'm saying cooling also, then that is called as cooling cogeneration system. There's more chance to recover the heat and uh, energy conversion efficiency is uh, it's, uh, increasing and uh, that has more industrial benefit compared to the uh, power alone system i will explain actually these are the elements fabricated elements we, uh, at the lab level we demonstrated i will show the basic working principle before explaining this uh, uh, binary fluid system designed for both the power as well as cooling with a single Space one stretch of operation. Uh, this is the source, and the uh, fluid is uh, expanding in the turbine one to two. We are starting here, and followed by condensation. The liquid is uh, throttled. After throttling, we can see the low temperature expand moving to the evaporator. And the subcooler is its option. This is a COP. 
and then it goes to the observer as usual. The weak solution is mixed here of the throttling and it is supplied to the boiler. Uh, these uh, circuits is some, some modifications are there to improve the energy conversion efficiency or uh, thermal efficiency of the turbine system. The potential of this circuit is so the power and cooling means what we will expect. Uh, there is a separate power plant circuit and the separate cooling plant circuit, and both are uh, coupled like the uh, uh, Breton cycle is coupled with the rank in steam rank. It's not like that. It's a single cycle only. The cooling concentration is a single cycle only. One stretch of operation. Uh, simultaneously, we can generate the electricity, electricity as well as the food. That is a, the benefit of uh, this circuit. That's why our, the, our observations are uh, saying uh, we are designing this binding fluid system for the simultaneous benefit of this power and electricity. Uh, commercially, that has more weightage compared to the Fuel system. Even vapor absorption also at COP is too low, it's less than one. Vapor compression it is three, we are 3.5, where is 3.5 3 and where is 0 0.3, 0 0.4 uh, that COP. That's why there is a lot of gap is there uh, and it, it is uh, designed or used for the uh, single output system. Uh, there is a uh, 15 minutes time. Okay, let me uh, try to conclude these uh, points. Uh, next is uh, steam uh, ranking cycle. So how many focus here? First one is ORC, second is OFC, third is uh, binding fluid, that's Kalina KC. Fourth is SR. And why I'm computing uh, the last fifth is the uh, SFC. So these are conventional systems, that's why no need to explain too much on this ranking cycle, steam ranking cycle. Uh, this ranking cycle, yeah, the turbine, the field water heater, open field water heater, etc. Uh, I will show some of the formulation, especially for exergy point of view, because uh, this workshop is focused on second level. I will explain parallelly. Are you able to listen the video? Are you is coming from video or not? Yes, sir. Yes. Actually, I am. Yes, yes. I think coming to my voice. Uh, actually, left side you can see the formulation for energy of each and every components. To see any system. The power system may be a single fluid system, binary fluid system. First, we have to formulate mass balance, energy balance, exergy balance. After this formulation, in terms of exergy, I am saying, exergy associated with efficient every component we have below. But that is not sufficient. Component level alone is not sufficient. Part is also. Hot food is also not available. For example, water cooled condenser. Water cooled condenser, hot water is escaping. Hot water also carries some exergy. That exergy we have to count as exergy loss. Similarly, exhaust gas from the chimney that goes to the atmosphere, let us say 120 degrees centigrade, that also carries the exergy. That we have to count as that's why inertia is exergy loss in the pine and then the pump and oil that exergy of fluids also we have to calculate. What exergy loss is the sum of as well as the streams? Uh, this is uh, and uh, the model also see this is the same. Ranking cycle has find the energy loss from boiler. That's that is 
this is the that the last pairs but gas hot water what i'm saying uh, these are the components that the fine contents etc these are the hot gas and hot water what exactly is saying compared to energy hot gas there is there is a chance to take over the game is saying the hot gas there is a enough exercise is available so that we can modify the configuration so that we can tap more we can get more that type of ideas we can get with the incorporation of this analysis that's uh, second law evolution which is not possible by energy analysis And the last one is uh, SFC. This is the steam flash cycle. And the, uh, I got the steam flash cycle configuration, uh, configuration from Rasi Siemens uh, because the Rasi Siemens they are in India. Now uh, they renamed India Siemens. I think so. They they are using this technology. They collaborated with uh, Japan. Japan designed and installed this type of this type of plant uh, in Rasi Siemens. and left hand side you can see a, a typical cement factory uh, of course my focus is not on the cement factory that's why i am not showing this furnace etc so hot gas is coming from the factory from the furnace that is used in the basic story uh, that's uh, hr especially hr as we heat for steam generator steam generated and uh, expanded contents component but in addition to these components the flash is added same like uh, organic flasher the steam is uh, the water is expanded to liquid as well as steam the additional amount of steam has been supplied so that uh, the the output is increased and the efficiency is decreased efficiency is decreased here yeah, this is a simple separator like uh, mechanical uh, physically it is separating the liquid as well as uh, steam same like even uh, here also you can see a steam separating drum in the boiler the function of the steam separating drum is the liquid and vapor has been separated liquid is going back for evaporation again and the vapor alone has been supplied to the turbine similarly in the flasher also uh, after flashing this is the flashing uh, the vapor alone has been separated and supplied to the turbine according to the present difference that's p1 and p2 the the sizes will change that's uh, You know the low pressure means it demands the heavy size. That means the size will depends upon the pressure. And the formulation of this thermodynamic formulation both is energy as well as this exergy. In this cement factory, actually initially the fuel is burned, the coal. Ah, uh, the coal is burned and with the air atmospheric air here, the coal also has some moisture content. After burning, it is giving the exhaust gas. The exhaust gas uh, consists of carbon dioxide, H2O, water vapor, oxygen, and nitrogen. But because this is the complete burning, there is no any uh, incomplete combustion. That's why there is no carbon monoxide actually being uh, considered here. Uh, and how to solve thermodynamically? How to solve this equation? The reaction equation. The coal we know the composition of coal, and uh, if you know the RPL ratio, this A pi also we know. And moisture content, P1, P2, P3, P4, we don't know, and uh, the temperature of the reaction that is also unknown. So these five unknowns can be evaluated by five equations out of five. Four is the uh, mass balance, that's the C balance, H, P, H, O, N balance, and fifth is the energy balance. So we are adding the sixth equation, that's the exergy balance. We can also calculate the It is reversible to be associated with this combustion process. So this is the result for energy point of view. I am showing this is the result. That result can be extended for the uh, the power plant uh, with uh, working fluid and hot fluid. The hot fluid temperature, hot gas temperature is decreasing, whereas this uh, working fluid is increasing. But we have to keep the constraints for the property transfer. What are the constraints used in uh, heat recovery? One is the pinch point. 
The pinch point is a minimum temperature difference in the evaporator between the hot gas, hot fluid, and the working fluid. So I can say here that T14 minus uh, T8, which is the saturation temperature. Saturation temperature is called as uh, the pinch point. But T7 is not equal to T8. Here, it's almost is looking T7 is equal to T8. But there is a small gap between T7 and T8. That gap is that gap is called as approach point. You may see a small uh, vertical line. The T7 is maintained below the saturation temperature. That difference is called as approach point. That is the saturation temperature minus uh, the temperature fluid ended temperature. Why this approach point is maintained in the heat recovery? Because it allows a smooth transmission from liquid phase to the vapor phase. There is without approach point, there is a sudden transmission of liquid into vapor. It will create some mechanical vibrations. That's why if we avoid that mechanical vibrations by fitting, uh, we are incorporating a small amount of approach point. The Sankey diagram is used for the energy analysis and the organic ranking cycle option and organic class cycle option with the working fluid of one to R123 is compared here. Uh, there is no exhaust losses uh, in organic ranking cycle with 5.9%. Uh, the Sankey diagram is showing the uh, slightly the it is decreased to 53.6% because the wasted recovery is used with the plaster. Economizer load is increased. What second line analysis is uh, showing here, exhaust losses are 36.6 percent, whereas here the drastically the exhaust losses are decreased 16.2 percent. There is a uh, exergy point of view, the Grassmann diagram shows the detailed explanation. The detailed explanation at each and every component we can be able to uh, scrutinize. It is not possible completely with the answer. Okay, I am skipping some of the uh, results here, uh, time because of the time being. Analysis is the benefit of the slashing and the optimization systems and uh, where we have to, uh, uh, how to maintain the source temperature, it is, is it uh, below the critical temperature of the working fluid or above the critical temperature of working fluid and advantage of the splashing and uh, modeling like uh, without repeating the same story like uh, optimization, those uh, engineers, the developing engineers, right away they can use this uh, correlations like substituting the temperature directly, they can find the boiler temperature. These positions has been generated for various working fluids. Similarly, the optimum we identified after crossing the critical temperature. Source temperature is if it is a source temperature of working fluid is above the critical temperature, then only we can we are getting the optimum source temperature. So that there is no optimization uh, for OFC, uh, OFC. That's why I can list out uh, many uh, benefits from this ORC. We have seen including this KC system, the which are suitable for low temperature and uh, low maintenance, etc. And with some difficulties like uh, low efficiency and toxic and uh, deterioration at the high temperature, fossil equipment. And uh, I told just now that there's maintenance issues like uh, most of the equipments we are importing. These are the, some of the practical issues we are facing currently. And this is a comparison of the performance comparison of this uh, six working for this um, uh, organic class cycle system. Here, R123 is exhibiting a higher efficiency, and the R717 also is good. Uh, relative cycle efficiency is good because why this relative cycle efficiency is included here? The source temperature depends upon the uh, properties of working food. The boiling point of working fluid is not same, it will change the fluid to fluid. That's why uh, we can't judge based on this uh, efficiency alone because source temperature is high, means obviously we can expect more efficiency. Cycle efficiency. That's why relative cycle efficiency will justify better than uh, cycle energy efficiency or research. Also, comparison of this uh, OFC uh, for uh, 
power generation point of view uh, it's fine uh, one if you feels like r134 and r245 is failing for uh, power augmentation because the, it, it demands more work input for the uh, solution form that is the reason but remaining fluids under this consideration they are doing better uh, augmentation crashing uh, not but i as i mentioned uh, we can't uh, expect efficiency higher efficiency this flash technology compared to the was that's why we can't so I recommend fire system or solar based systems binary fluid system is uh, actually this is a big story uh, so development of the fluids and uh, that's a property and process finding the subsystems there are many uh, my book is detailed explanation is available in my book and uh, of course uh, dr sankar ganesh is also uh, my co author for this book the conditions but it's more complex this binary fluid system uh, the optimum result see here is a function of temperature as well as the storm solution concentration earlier uh, that's a uh, steam or uh, argon uh, uh, boiler optimum result the site has been calculated by substituting the temperature but here energy to the temperature source temperature we also need to supply the solutions according to this development coefficients without repeating this uh, optimization process we can calculate the uh, optimum boiler pressure the specification this is a book available or a very specific detailed level uh, this book is available for those who are interested to design and do the projects in binary fluid system uh, it is the basic fundamental knowledge as well as the advanced level knowledge. Uh, some of our works uh, I will show this uh, power plant and the lab scale generated and uh, some power plants directed and the both single fluid system as well as the binary fluid system. Steam is a single fluid system. Boiler, direction of the boiler for uh, this standby boiler solar source also this is binary fluid system in binary fluid system uh, we modified the heat exchangers uh, for single fluid system, let us say condenser and boiler, even shell and two heat exchanger is enough. But we use the falling film heat exchanger. This is the testing of this falling film heat exchanger. The falling film heat exchanger is more suitable, more compact also for the binding. So this, the overall heat transfer coefficient is better uh, with uh, falling film heat exchanger compared to uh, uh, shell and two heat exchanger. And also, these are the optimization uh, of uh, steam banking cycle, steam plant cycle, objective of uh, power generation. As you know. steam power generation, that's especially using the waste heat coming from the two swimming tanks. Actually, they have two units, unit one and unit two. Uh, we showed the uh, uh, we designed for power generation and uh, we estimated and now currently they are planning the Germany equipment they are doing actually for this activity. and I told this is a glossy uh, cement the flash you can see the flasher a uh, steam flasher so now it is uh, called as India cement here this bottom end system Popping systems also is there. Heat recovery combined. Heat techniques are available. These are also um, case studies we did in Kerala, and in Andhra Pradesh, Myanmar, and land to that some of the ideas. And finally, it's my uh, I wish to conclude the low temperature. Technology like OAC and AC, and but we have to take the precautions of uh, upgrades because performance conditions are changing. So, before going to erect uh, cyber technology, 
surrounding uh, compared the uh, role of configurations and tools so that the decision making we have to take the correct uh, the layout as well as uh, uh, to meet the objectives like uh, either power augmentation or efficiency augmentation or combined power as efficiency augmentation. I thank my Swami Gupta, that immediately and uh, my advisor that they can now and also the uh, government of India, CSAR, SCRP, and the DST. The support, financial support, convert my ideas into reality. Thank you, thank you, Anandal, uh, for listening session. Thank you, Dr. Tri Srinivas, sir. It was a very wonderful session, sir. We gained knowledge on your topic, thermal cycle of uh, heat recovery power plants. I hope our participants would have gained more knowledge. Thank you for your valuable information, sir. I ask the questions. Uh, yes, sir. Participants are requested to ask their doubts or queries if you needed. Sir, uh, uh, am I audible, sir? Sir, am yes, I audible? Yes, you are audible. Sir, I would like to know yes, what sir. is the difference between Sankey diagram and Grossman diagram? Audible. What is the difference between Sankey diagram and Grossman diagram? Grossman. Okay. Sankey diagram is uh, used for energy balance. Yes, yes, I am showing. The Sankey diagram is used for the energy balance. Grassman diagram is used for the exergy balance. I think we are seeing, I am in the screen sharing in more only, I think so. Uh, first okay, one okay. showing that both are uh, same. The diagram is same. But the evaluation analysis is different. The energy analysis uh, drawing is called as uh, Sankey diagram. XRG analysis is uh, the diagram is called as Grassman diagram. The Grassman diagram you oh. will see all the XRG losses from it, XRG input, XRG losses. What are the arrows it is showing as XRG losses? Whereas in the Sankey diagram, this is the energy loss. Sankey diagram oh, shows the energy loss, uh, like energy balance equation, input loss and output. Okay. Grassman diagram is focused on XRG input. Put XRG losses and XRG output. First law efficiency and second law efficiency. Both have significant importance, but uh, uh, you know XRG has uh, used more detailed uh, uh, analysis compared to the energy. Without energy, we of course we can't do the XRG. XRG is also is a function of energy. Thank you, okay. sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir, I have one question. Sir, I have one question. May I ask if, if, if time is there? Uh, yeah, good afternoon, sir. That, it's me, Prateek. Yeah, it's me, Prateek Malve from Sangli, Maharashtra. Sir, it was a wonderful presentation. I think I have thoroughly um, listened to these particular presentations and uh, the insights what you have recommend. I think all the knowledge and everything, it is up to the mark. The only thing that I would like to ask is, uh, I'm also working on an organic Rankine cycle. So can you please let me know what is the least possible temperature with which minimum uh, possible temperature with which we can start or implement an organic Rankine cycle? Uh, because the source temperature uh, with us is around 70 degree, 80 degree or maximum 90 degree centigrade. So can we implement an OLC with this source temperature of 90 degree centigrade? Yeah, Please, you may you may select R134. Yes, yes, I got your point. It is 70, 90, it's slightly below 100 degrees. And let me take the hot water. R134A is okay. You may use R134. But don't uh, okay. expect the, the higher efficiency, higher output. Just we, okay, can, run, we can run the ORC, whether it is giving the efficiency that you don't expect. We can run the ORC yeah. with the R134A. 
Okay, sir. Yes, sir. I think the same fluid we have on refrigeration plant also R134A. The only thing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely, sir. And one more thing, sir, regarding the components you have mentioned, uh, how to select those uh, components for this small scale ORC? Because you mentioned in one of the points that components are very critical uh, and, and costly. Yes. So how to select for this components yes. for this ORC small scale? Yes. Uh, the, since the capacity is too small, that's, uh, the lab scale means we will generate few kilowatts only, not megawatts. No? If it is a plant means what a 5 megawatts or 10 megawatts, that's different. The demonstration of this idea, new idea in the lab scales, like fast food displacement uh, systems, you know. Let us say yes, spiral, yes, spiral expander or vein expander. Those machines you can use. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. Because if you want to use the turbine, I use the turbine back from Bangalore. That's a single stage only. It's not multi-stage, since that is a two kilowatts. Single stage uh, expander. Okay, sir. Uh, yeah, so sir, one. Uh, for the time being, I'm not able to elaborate yeah. much. I just I give outlines only. Sorry. Yes, sir. So I will be in contact with you. Uh, hopefully, you would help me and uh, to uh, my research work. So maybe after apart from these sessions, I will be in contact with you. So please guide me in that regard as and when I will be recording. I contact Dr. Shankar Ganesh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I will definitely be in contacting with you. Yeah. Thank you, sir, for your valuable uh, feedback. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Srinivaskar, this is Anil from IIT Tirupati. Hello. Uh, sir. Good <laughs> Hope you are doing good. Uh, nice presentation, sir. Very nice presentation, and uh, I thoroughly enjoyed. I was trying to listen to some lectures for last three four days. I couldn't get time, but somehow today I got some time. Uh, yeah, it's a real presentation. Good thing is you are doing a lot of experiments, uh, which is very difficult in this area, especially combining power generation and refrigeration, all those things. Okay, all the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Anand Guru. Thank you. Okay, any else, uh, Dr. Shankar Ganesh? Sir, no participants. Uh, uh, there are no questions in the very box, chat box, sir. Ah, thank you, sir. They just borrow to me. Sir, so shall we wind up the session, sir? Participants are requested to rejoin the session at 11.55. Participants can go for a small break and rejoin at 11.55. Thank you all. Sir, thank you, sir. Okay, once again, thank you. Minister, what time, sir? Yes, sir. Sir, so, okay. sir, uh, sir, one more thing. Uh, I, I would request you to please uh, share the material uh, to you and to the organizers, uh, if, if possible, to uh, you, sir. I would request the organizers and to uh, Sri Nivas, sir. Please, sir. Yep, definitely. Okay. okay. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you. I will share. I will share all the Yes, sir. Okay, Shankar Ganesh, bye. Stay how class from 10 to Yes, 10 sir. To thank 10. you. Welcome to 11. Okay, bye. 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 So, uh, 11 or 11 which is completed, sir? Uh, okay, sir. Hi, sir. Maybe 11.15 we can start because 10-15 minutes I will just question. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Coming with Mr. You are okay? Coming with Mr. Coming Wednesday is uh, sorry, uh, just a second. Coming Wednesday is 18th, right? 18th, sir. Yes, okay. sir. I think I'm going to Okay, thank you.